Hello, I'm Louise Minchin. Welcome to Nutrition for Life, a program by the British Nutrition Foundation and ITN Business. From infancy to later years, we know our diet affects our health. But with growing inequalities in accessing and affording healthy food, people are paying the price with their health. I'm joined now by the British Nutrition Foundation's Nutrition Communications Manager, Bridget Benenham. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Now, the link between nutrition and healthy living we know is well known and it starts in early years. But is the cost of living crisis widening health equalities and what are the long term impacts of that? So you're absolutely right, it starts in the early years and the period from infancy through to preschool is a really critical window of development. But the cost of living crisis is hitting everyone and children living in families on low incomes are more likely to be affected by food insecurity. So that's a real concern with children's development. Now our advice when you're weaning children, starting to give them food is to give them a wide variety of different kinds of food so that they get to experience lots of different tastes, lots of different textures, they get to learn about food. But of course, children are naturally fearful of new foods. And so it may be that when you're offering, particularly foods like vegetables, that children will reject them at first. And so what we would advise is that to keep offering those foods repeatedly, because we know the evidence shows that after a number of times of eating those foods, that children will start to accept them. But of course, if you're already struggling to afford the food your family needs, then that's really difficult because you just can't afford for that food to go to waste. What about when children reach school age? How does their diet affect their development then? So we know that starting school, one in five children are overweight or obese. And by the time they leave primary school, that has risen to one in three. So that's really worrying, both for children's short-term health and their long-term health as they grow up. And that's very strongly linked to inequality. So children from the lowest income areas are more than twice as likely to be overweight or obese than children from the highest income areas. Then as we move to older children, to adolescents, we know that their diets are the poorest of the whole population. So they are eating too much sugar, too little fibre. Only uh, one in 10 of adolescents are getting their fibre a day and too little of nutrients such as uh, iron and calcium, which are both really important as children grow. So of course, in adolescence, it's a rapid period of growth and development. We need to develop our bone strength, muscle strength, and also cognitive development. So it's so important that children at school age, all the way through school, are getting the nutrients they need to be healthy. Now, education can't solve all of that, mm -hmm. but it is important that children learn, develop the skills and knowledge they need to be healthy. And at the British Nutrition Foundation, our education programme supports teachers across the UK to do exactly that, to teach children about food and nutrition, as well as supporting the whole school food policy that we know is so important. <laughs> As we age, nutrition is just as important. The UK is an ageing population, not though a healthy one. One in four adults living with obesity. That's going to have an impact on people's health, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. We're living longer, but we're not living healthier. And that's a real issue as we age as a population. Um, it's also the UN decade of healthy ageing because this is a worldwide problem, not just the UK. And that acknowledges the challenges that are being faced all over the world in supporting the health of older populations. And this is an area where inequalities affect us too. So older adults who are on lower incomes will also struggle to access the foods that they really need to keep them healthy as they age. We know that our diet in the UK is falling short of recommendations. What more do the British Nutrition Foundation believe should be done to help people make healthier choices? So we want a future where everyone has a healthy and sustainable diet, but we know that the food environment that we live in doesn't support us to do that. Now, part of our role as a charity is to provide evidence-based information for people. So the facts behind the headlines so that people can make the right decisions to choose healthier foods, but we can't put all of the responsibility onto individuals. We also need to change our food environment. So we work with food companies across the food chain to change the food environment and make it easier for people to eat more healthily. So we do things like look at reformulation to make products healthier, to look at nutritional guardrails to shift the balance of products to a healthier profile, and also look at the needs of different population groups so that companies can cater for the needs of both older and younger people. Bridget Bennon from the British Nutrition Foundation. Thank you. Thank you.